Maybe you've heard of the uh, butterfly effect. A uh, butterfly flaps its wings on one side of the world and the other side of the world now has a hurricane through all the minor interactions that caused. Well, I'd like to call this the butterball effect because good old fat fuck Harvey Weinstein has unleashed utter chaos on Tinseltown. At the rate things are progressing, we're going to need to go fund me a graveyard for the amount of skeletons that are hopping out of powerful people's closets. So much has come out over the last week to week and a half that it, it, it's really difficult to pick from. There's so much insane shit happening right now that when you take a moment and you step back from it and you really look at the scope of it, it leaves you awestruck. It's hard to fathom that it's really actually happening, but it is. When we last left off, Harvey was accused of sexual harassment by a multitude of women, but those allegations have continually grown from there to encompass an enormous amount of actresses in Hollywood. Hell, Uma Thurman is pissed off at Harvey Weinstein, so fucking mad at him that she has to collect herself before she makes a public statement about how awful he is. But the really striking thing from this particular article would be this excerpt, this little blurb. 90 women, fucking 90 women, have been bothered by Harvey Weinstein, either sexually harassed or assaulted. And when I say assaulted, I mean criminally assaulted. The police in New York on Friday said that they were developing a strong criminal case against producer Harvey Weinstein after an actress's claims that he raped her seven years ago. Speaking at a news conference at police headquarters in Lower Manhattan, officials in the police department said they were gathering evidence with an eye towards preparing a warrant to arrest Mr. Weinstein. So good old Butterball there, he's looking at some uh, actual prison time, some rape allegations, not just harassment. Not just being creepy and saying, I want you to watch me while I shower, but actual rape charges. But if you've been paying attention this week, it doesn't just end with Harvey Weinstein. Multiple people are getting accused now of everything from sexual harassment to sexual assault. And some of the stories surrounding it are just unreal. Juliana Margella says Steven Seagal and Harvey Weinstein tried to sexually harass her. When she was 23, Margella said a female casting director sent her to Seagal's apartment at 10 p.m. to read a scene. The casting director pushed the actress's objections by offering to reimburse her cab fare and promising that she would be present as well. But when Margellus arrived later that night, she found herself alone with the action movie star. She set me up, Margellus said, of the other woman who arranged the audition. The encounter with Seagal quickly turned threatening, the actress recalled. He made sure that I saw his gun, which I'd never seen a gun in real life, Margellus said. I got out of there unscathed. I don't know how I got out of that hotel room. I sort of squirmed my way out. She said Seagal tried to turn the audition into a sexual encounter with a tactic also allegedly practiced by Weinstein. It always starts with, I'm a healer. I want to massage you, she said. Luckily in this case, we actually have video evidence of what transpired in that hotel room. And it is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I'm the cook. But Weinstein and Seagal aren't the only ones being accused of things. Ex-Nickelodeon producer Chris Savino apologizes amid sexual harassment allegations. James Toback on new allegations by Rachel McAdams and Selma Blair. I have nothing to say about it. And by the way, Toback is accused, I believe right now it stands at 300 women. Three, 300 women have had something to say about Toback. Six women accuse filmmaker Brett Ratner of sexual harassment or misconduct. Hey, Jeremy Piven. Remember when you cornered me in your trailer on the Entourage set? Remember grabbing my boobies on the couch without asking? This one event with Harvey Weinstein has set into motion a cascade of allegations that have been coming from everybody concerning a lot of powerful people in Hollywood. But the stories get crazier still because it's not just actresses accusing powerful men of this. No, they're not the only victims. Other men are victims of this too. Children even. Now, for those of you familiar with Corey Feldman, you'll remember that he had allegations about being abused while he worked in Hollywood, that both he and Corey Haim were targeted by pedophiles within Hollywood. Now, recently, Corey actually started a fundraiser to make a documentary about it. But with the sheer amount of allegations that have been coming out recently, he's actually moved a bit forward with this. 
and he's not waiting for the documentary to start naming names. That's him. Yeah, that's him. This guy on his MySpace page and his Facebook page has got pictures of me and Corey Haim. You're kidding me. No, he still taunts it, flaunts it. Recently going on to Dr. Oz to talk about this. So you're all aware that Corey Feldman came on the show today and made allegations about people that he says have abused him. And John Grissom is the, is the, is the real name that we've been able to decipher so far. The public should be concerned because this guy has an extensive arrest record. Everything from assault, theft, uh, drugs. Uh, right now, is, yeah. So a pretty graphic image. It is. Uh, he's currently in, in violation of reporting because in 2001, he was arrested on child molestation charges. There was, a, there was a jury trial. He was found guilty in 2003. He served time in prison. For child molestation. For child molestation. Now, when you look at the person that he's accusing, this one name that's come forward so far, you might say, well, that's a, that's a bit part. That's not a powerful person in Hollywood, even though Corey and Dr. Oz have both said that some of the names that have been spoken about privately that they haven't aired yet are really quite shocking. And there are other names that he shared privately that I'm not going to share right now that uh, are stunning. Well, you'd be right. This, this John Grissom, this person is not a powerful Hollywood insider. But do you know who is? Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey was recently accused by Anthony Rapp of sexual advances made towards him when he was 14 years old. He had said that he'd gone to a party, that he woke up on the couch, and that Kevin Spacey was basically on top of him. Now, when this story initially broke out, Kevin Spacey tried the PR route of making it go away by admitting to something else. So he decided he was going to come out of the closet and admit that he was gay. That if that somehow was going to magically make this sexual allegation go away, it had the opposite effect. People became very angry. They felt like Kevin Spacey was trying to use homosexuality as a cover for molesting children. When that didn't work, I swear to God this is not a bullshit article. This is 100% real. You can go read it yourself. When the I'm gay thing didn't work, and he was getting all this heat from multiple communities, he went, uh, he went with a different PR tactic. The good old-fashioned, I was raped by Nazis. Exclusive. Kevin Spacey's father was Nazi child rapist who hated Jews and sexually abused his own son for years. And their mother knew. This, this entire article is insane. But I just want to read you one excerpt from it because, <laughs> because why wouldn't I? The family would be forced to sit through dinner time, rants as Fowler Sr. lectured them on white supremacy, claimed that the Holocaust was a lie, that Jews ran banks and Hollywood, and that something called biocrud would destroy the planet. He would stand behind Fowler with a riding whip, demanding that he read whatever diatribe he picked and beat him if he refused. And for those of you wondering, why, well, yes, he did go for the Hitler look. So Kevin Spacey and his brothers were sexually assaulted by a Hitler impersonator who would read the Mein Kampf while he anally raped them, apparently. That's a bold move, Mr. Spacey, coming out with that one to uh, try to duck away from the allegations. But surprisingly, it didn't work. In fact, the amount of allegations that are now coming out against Kevin Spacey, it's, it's so absurdly large, I don't even, I can't cover it all. This would be an hour-long video. Just, just look at this. Look at the amount of people, children, mind you, teenage boys, that are coming out talking about Kevin Spacey making sexual advances towards them. Apparently, if you were a teenage boy with a pulse, Kevin Spacey tried to fuck you is really the takeaway from this enormous goddamn list of people that he constantly hit on. Some of these are so fucking ridiculous. And the allegations aren't old. In fact, co-workers of his from House of Cards have come out to allege that he sexually harassed them, which probably plays into Netflix's decision to end the series. I know there was a lot of speculation that they had ulterior motives, but if you have this many people, I think upwards of eight, that are working on the set saying Kevin Spacey is sexually harassing them, then yeah, that, that's probably time to just shut it down. I mean, for fuck's sake, Richard Dreyfuss's son claims Kevin Spacey groped him aged 18 while his dad was oblivious in the same room. Harry Dreyfus says the alleged incident happened in 2008 while his Oscar-winning dad was starring in Spacey's play. But don't get the idea that you needed to be famous or be an actor in Hollywood for Kevin Spacey to try to come on to you. A British barman says shamed Kevin Spacey flashed at him outside a hotel room, then handed him $5,000 watch to hush him up. Daniel Beale told how he was having a cigarette break when the Oscar-winning actor, 58, sat beside him on a bench, flashed his privates, and said, it's big, isn't it? I'm going to have to go with Spacey on this one. I'm going to imagine they're a pretty big pair of balls if you're going to molest Scarface. 
at least according to the Indian Express, who actually printed that. That's in the article. Apparently, he really did say hello to his little friend. A-plus journalism. That, uh, that is an amazing article. <laughs> it's a really great article. I guess we should have just been paying more attention to Family Guy. Help! I've escaped from Kevin Spacey's basement! Help me! That makes Seth, what, five for five now? With the Weinstein joke, uh, the Spacey joke, he's made about three others. That doesn't even include Bruce Jenner transitioning years before that happened. It's gotten to the point where other media outlets are finally starting to pick up on the coded messages that are in Family Guy episodes. I have the sneaking suspicion that Seth MacFarlane hears all the Hollywood gossip and finds a way to get around being sued for talking about it by making it a joke in a cartoon show. When this all started with Harvey Weinstein and the other people that were accused as the weeks went on, it focused primarily on adult female actresses. However, with Corey Feldman and now Kevin Spacey, we're starting to hear about young children in Feldman's case, or teenage boys in Rap's case. And it makes you wonder what exactly is going to come out next. With all the rumors that circulate around Hollywood, with the idea that pedowood is a real thing, that children are exploited in Hollywood, are we finally seeing the tip of the iceberg? Is this the actual opening up of the floodgates, where allegations are going to come out against people that will be damaging beyond belief? So far we have directors and producers and A-list stars, but imagine if in a week from now, or two weeks from now, an allegation came out against somebody like a Steven Spielberg, or somebody with that much of a history in Hollywood. It would be the absolute killing blow to the entire entertainment industry. And who's to say something like that won't happen? Perhaps not in the case of Spielberg, but with somebody else. As more people come out, other actors and actresses, both adult and children, find strength in numbers. At this point, it's crystal clear that there is a definitive problem in Hollywood. The question is, how big is that problem? And how deep does it go? And I honestly get the feeling that within the next month, we're going to have a very good idea of just how bad that problem is.